morning. Um, so we're in a different classroom, so it's a different setup. I'm going to uh, to introduce some elements of marketing today. Uh, as you know, uh, somebody wrote me well, okay, so your assignment right now is to make clear to me three ideas by Monday about what kind of small business that you can, you and your partner can do. Um, there's a lot of reasons why uh, some businesses won't work. Um, I wrote three of the main reasons uh, in the task. The first reason is that you need to analyze the market of Saigon. So you, you need to be able to do field work. You need to be able to go out into the city and to analyze your competition, to talk to your customers. So if you have a big company that's all over the country, then you won't be able to interview your customers. You need to compete in the market that's here. So you can do your research. The second thing is that uh, if you um, if you're going to take this project to the next semester, which we're going to do, you're going to find that it's going to be very difficult for you to do a lot of the business plan if you have to make a big factory or you have to do some big production because you have to get costs of all the different things that you're going to need for your business and it's going to be very, very difficult to figure out how much to build a factory. So, um, any service business is fine. Um, any kind of small restaurant, of course, they have some small production, but it's manageable. Um, no mass production. What we're dealing with here is a market that we can identify the customers. It's called a niche. We'll talk about that uh, later. But a niche market is a very specific market, whereas a mass market is the opposite. Uh, everyone needs toothpaste. Everyone needs toilet paper, I suppose. Um, the uh, those are mass markets. We're not trying to meet a mass market. We're trying to identify a certain group of customers that are interested in our specific uh, business. So when you pick the business, uh, they're due on Monday, three, three of them, so I can find at least one of them that's going to be good for you. Somebody asked me yesterday online, um, Oh, we have to get our idea approved by Thursday, so can you approve my idea because it's Thursday? Today is Friday. The due date for your ideas is Monday. The approval date is next Thursday, right? We're not going backwards in time, so how can the approval be before the date that it's due to turn it? Anyway, um, and we need to get that going because it's time for us to start our marketing plan. It's a five-week project, and it's going to be tough if we are not in school. So. We need to get started immediately. Um, I'm going to show a short video here. This is an introduction to marketing. Um, there's some terminology that we already know in this video, like stakeholders. So this will just give us an overview and a definition of marketing to work with. that most people they hear the term marketing and they think about advertising first. 
advertising is part of marketing, but marketing is much broader. There's much more to marketing than just advertising. Um, advertising is communication, right? Uh, delivering a product um, is actually has to do with moving the product to the store and presenting it at the store for the customer to buy or possibly online. There's a million ways. And to create value to the customer. Value basically means quality for a certain price, right? A certain price that you feel like you get something that's worth the price. So we have advertising, we have distribution, and then we have price and quality of the product. So that's where we get our four P's from. Marketing has what we call four P's. Price, place, product, and promotion. So that's all here. Promotion, place, distribution, and then here is price and product in value. Must take into consideration their employees, stakeholders, and society. The most successful companies engage in very consumer-oriented marketing. They spend enormous amounts of time, money, and resources examining the everyday lives of their customers and then create products to fill a need. Examples of companies that are known for creative, leading edge marketing are Disney, Pepsi, Apple, and Procter & Gamble. Marketing is made up of four elements, product, place, promotion, and price. The elements must be used in a cohesive plan to effectively target the consumer. A product can be either a physical product or a service. Place is where the product is purchased. Price is the amount a consumer pays for the product, and promotion consists of the communication tools used to effectively get the company's message out. So again, the uh, marketing process starts with the analysis of the need that the customer has try to understand how we can get something that the customer wants to them. So it has to do with research and development of a product. So it starts with product, really. Um, but once we have our product, we have to figure out how much our customers are willing to pay for it, um, where they shop, where they're going to buy the product, where they would be interested to shop, how they're comfortable to shop, when they buy, it, for example, and, and how. And then, of course, communicate all that information. The official definition of marketing is it is a philosophy that's main focus is providing customer satisfaction. Marketing is the activity, set of institutions, and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. So that's quite complicated, um, but this is the activity, right? Marketing is an activity. We are market researchers at the moment, uh, we will be, um, and processes for how we get that information. And this allows us to use that information to create advertising, to figure out how to deliver the product to customers <coughs> of certain products that have value, and the customer feels they the money they pay is good enough for that. And the benefits should go to the customer, the benefits should go to the company, for our suppliers as well. Uh, our other dis uh, business partners could be uh, distribution, um, our shops that sell our product, and also be something that's good for society. So that's a fairly good working definition. It's a fairly good working definition. You can use that. It has all the elements of the four P's in there. Okay, so uh, I'm in chapter five. 
of our books. It's called Understanding Your Market. We have uh, a quote to start the unit. Authentic marketing is not the art of selling what you make, but knowing what to make. That's product. It is the art of identifying and understanding the customer's needs and creating solutions that deliver satisfaction to customers and profits to the producers and benefits for the stakeholders of the business, right? So we know the stakeholders includes the government. So if we're successful, then we pay taxes. So uh, it's a fairly decent quote. Uh, let's start with the term market, though. We have to uh, think of market in many different ways. We go to a market. Uh, we usually think of a market as a place that we buy and people sell. I think that's the most general definition. Um, but markets can be defined in very broad terms. You can have a global market. You can have a domestic market. You can have a local market. There's many ways that you can define the size of a market. In the most general sense, a market is a location where transactions or deals take place. Markets can be physical meeting places, such as a livestock market, or virtual locations, such as an online auction. An online auction means like eBay. An auction is where customers bid the price up until someone has the price that's highest uh, that they're willing to pay and the seller decides that that's acceptable to them. These markets facilitate the trading of products and services. Services are also uh, businesses that you can do, <clears throat> as well as information about products. Marketing itself is a process whereby the pricing, promotion, and distribution of products is planned and carried out in order to meet the business goals the product being marketed might be a good, a service, an idea, or even uh, a person. I don't know what they mean by that. They can be more specific. <clears throat> Put simply, marketing is all the activities that you take to plan, price, promote, and distribute a product to current and potential customers. Current and potential customers. Right? So, uh, marketing has different functions. Uh, if you have current customers, your goal is to maintain those customers and to keep them as repeat customers and also look for potential, meaning new customers. A business needs to understand its market. That's research. That's what you're going to do for the next three weeks. Uh, customers included in the market are both consumers who already purchased the good, that's current, plus all consumers who might buy the product. So, um, you need to be able to identify who your customers might be. So let's look at the next idea is on page 38. 38, segmenting the market. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, there's something called a mass market, which is M-A-S-S, -S, mass. Mass market is for everyone, so there's no real segmenting going on there. Although, you will consider who is the buyer of the product. So, for example, let's say everyone uses toothpaste, but 70% of the toothpaste in the family is bought by the primary shopper. So is that the mom or the dad or whoever in the family does the primary shopping is the target for who you're trying to reach. So even though it's a mass market product, sometimes there is a customer that is actually preferred. Uh, everybody has to use the product, but one member of the family is buying the product. Um, but you don't need to break these markets down very much. A mass market product. Most people have to drink water. Most people um, use household products. Uh, the same shampoo, for example. Although shampoo can be very complicated. Um, toothbrushes. I mean, when you go to the shop, you can see how much companies try to differentiate themselves 
and to create differences between the products that are maybe sometimes very small or not real at all, but they look a little bit different or they're from a different country or um, they have some special uh, you know, shape to them that's different from the others. And even though everyone uses a toothbrush, there's trying to create differences within the toothbrush market to make us feel that there's big differences. So even in mass market products, there are some uh, different target markets, luxury brands, cheap brands, for example. Um, segment. To segment something means to cut it into slices, like a pizza. So usually we think about market share as a market is this. So here's a market, and market has its size. Uh, maybe it's 100,000 people. And then we can divide the market up into maybe different age groups. Okay, 65 plus, 40 to 65, uh, 30 to 40, um, under 18, and uh, 18 to 30. Okay, so you can divide it up by age, for example. Uh, those are segments of the market. <clears throat> So on page 38, mass marketing is a marketing approach where the product is marketed to all possible consumers in an attempt to reach the largest audience of potential consumers that is possible. If the business decides to identify a specific group of potential customers, this is defined as a target market. So a target market for a mass product might be whoever spends the money and goes shopping every week. A small business in particular is likely to want to target a smaller market segment. That's you, that's our project. That's why we're doing the marketing plan, is for you to learn how to segment the market and to find a niche. That's what it's called, a niche market. If the whole potential market base is represented as a pie chart, then smaller segments can be shown as niches or uh, smaller portions or segments of the entire market. So um, a niche product just means that you can identify some specific customers that are interested in that product. Not everyone wants to read um, Japanese comic books, but some people are interested and if you can find those people and create a situation where you um, get the comic books first, you know, you have a distribution system, then you'll be uh, in a good position to reach customers in Saigon who want that service. But you have to figure out how can you meet them? Where should you put your shop? Should it be online? Uh, if it's online, then how do your customers pay for it? And there's a bunch of other questions involved with how you solve the problem of serving those customers and finding out which comics they're interested in. So uh, that's part of the research. <clears throat> so um, given that we're not going to do, so we're not doing mass market products, right? No mass market products. All your products have to be for a specific group. We have to try to figure out um, what that actual size of that group would be. Right, so um, you can think about the city of uh, our city. So we have about 10, maybe let's just say 10 million people living here. And then your product is targeted at uh, women. So that's 5 million people, but then only women from the ages of 18 to 30, for example. So, out of 5 million women, maybe 1 million are in the group 18 to 30. So now our target's only 1 million, but then we have a geographical area that we can reach. So, uh, maybe the shop that we have, people will only travel 5 kilometers in any direction, or 4, or 3, whatever. And um, within that area uh, is much smaller, so that's maybe you can reach one-fifth of the city. <clears throat> so out of those million uh, women who are 18 to 30, 
you can only reach 20% of them. So now you're down to a potential market of 200,000 customers. That doesn't mean you're gonna have 200,000 customers, it just means that you have, those are the target. That's the people that you have to communicate with and try to find them. So you went from 10 million down to 200,000 just by narrowing it down from age and gender. If you go farther, if you go into um, uh, how much people are willing to spend, uh, what's the income level of the women 18 to 30 that you're trying to reach, you might find that there's really only uh, 50,000 potential customers for your business. Or you might find that there's none. You might find that there's very few people who are going to be able to buy your product at that price in that location. So that's why we do market research to try to figure out first the size of our market. <clears throat> so these are terms uh, that we use, market size. What is your market size? Um, continuing on page 38. Businesses segment the market in order to have a focus that allows them to be more competitive. Okay, so you want to be able to target your customers so your competition will uh, have to respond to you and you can beat them. <clears throat> and also meet the needs of customers. Uh, if a target market is clear, the business can design a focused product, find out what will attract them, uh, a price that they're willing to pay, uh, promote to them in a, in a way that, in, in, a, in a place that they read. So for example, uh, Maybe the people who are interested in Japanese comic books are uh, reachable through some conventions of uh, Japanese products, or they go to certain otaku websites, you can, or they play certain video games, you can advertise to them in those places, and that's what you have to find out, what kind of media that these customers use, so you can reach them directly. And uh, something that appeals to those potential customers. This will in turn assist with the achievement of the goals of the business. So the goal should be some level of sale, sales or market share. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, market size and market share. <clears throat> the potential market for a product could be considered to be the entire population of consumers who have any interest in the product. So that's your market, any interest in the product. This potential market will be a particular size. So if I normally, if you were in class, I would take a survey and I would say, okay, how many of you have uh, tried Mexican food before? And then 20% would raise their hand and then um, I'd say, okay, how many people would be willing to try, be interested in trying it if you never had it before? And that would be some potential customers that you would have. So you'd have your current customers, people who already have tried the product, people who are willing to try it, and that would be a percentage of the group. And so you could make some basic generalization. Um, maybe 20% of the people are, so let's say we go back to the example where we have 50,000 women that we, 18 to 30, that we identified as a potential market, and then we asked them, okay, how many of you have tried this product before? How many of you be willing to try it? And you find out that the market is even smaller than that, that it may, 20% um, of the people may not even want to try the product. So that's the kind of analysis that you need to do. You need to break down from the, from the, from the, the whole population down to a smaller market segment. Um, let me make one more point about uh, the difference between a mass market and a niche market. Uh, when you're advertising, uh, you're spending a lot of money on a mass market, right? You're gonna use TV, you're gonna use the most broad advertising strategy you can because you're trying to reach every customer. So you have a big budget for your advertising and you're not really wasting it because you're reaching everyone. If you're using or if you're selling something that's a product or service is a niche market, a smaller market, uh, anything that you, you know, your budget is gonna be small because you're a smaller company, but 
you're going to waste your resources if you use television, for example, because 90% of the people, unless it's a very specific program, 90% of the people won't be your real market customers. You only want to reach the people that are going to be interested in your product. You're not interested in communicating your brand to the masses. It's too expensive for a small company. So, market size and market share. The potential market for a product could be considered to be the entire population of consumers who have any interest in the product. This is a potential market and it will be a particular size. Within the whole market, the whole potential market, the business will target a specific section. This is called the target market. So you have to get used to these phrases, the target market. So, so far, we have a mass market. That's everybody who uses general products like toothpaste or toilet paper. Niche markets like uh, comic books or people who want to eat tiramisu or just smaller groups of people. Those are called niche markets. And then we have potential markets. Potential markets are the customers that you might be able to attract. And then we have the target market, which is the identification of the features of the group of people that you're trying to reach. Your target market is your future customers. The target market includes all the consumers that the business has decided to supply. A business may decide that it has more than one market. So some products, uh, yes, some products will appeal to different markets at the same time. A um, good example of that might be uh, pizza. Maybe pizza is attractive on the one side to families because you have to have eight slices. So families like to go out and eat pizza, but then it also might be attractive to teenagers because it's uh, fast food in some ways too. You can eat it very quickly. So a company might decide, oh, okay, so the best thing for me to do is to create uh, advertisements that show families sitting at a table, enjoying together the pizza, sharing all the family, one thing, like a hot pot, right? It gives you that, that kind of feeling like you're sharing something. And then at the same time, uh, I might uh, make a window in my shop that allows uh, teenagers or customers to drive up quickly, be able to buy like a half pizza or a small pizza. I think if you go to pizza company now, you can see that they sell small pizzas outside. So maybe this is attractive to people who are younger and on the go and don't have time to sit around in a restaurant. So uh, those are two separate markets, two different groups of people you're trying to serve. Um, a business may decide that it has more than one market. If this is possible, it's a good idea to prioritize these markets and decide which one is the most important market, the primary, and which one is less important, the secondary market. So then we get to market share. Market share is, uh, so we go back to the, the pie, the idea that the market is all of the customers. Right? Um, market share has to do with current customers. So current customers are people who already buy the product. Um, let me show you. I don't know if this is real. <laughs> I don't know how they would have. Uh, I'm very surprised if it was real. 
because uh, it doesn't include Samsung, right? You would expect Samsung to be there. Um, but anyway, uh, this would show market share, right? So something like Apple has almost one third of the market in this example. Sharp Electronics has about another uh, 17%. That's about half of the market is two companies. Um, Sony and these three companies have between maybe 15 and uh, you know 10 and 15 percent, and then there's all the other small companies in the market. So usually you have this company that's a market leader. This would be considered a market leader in this case, Apple. I would be surprised that so many Japanese people use apples, but maybe they do. Um, but this is an example of how you break down a market. So if you're a company who's entering a market like this, uh, you want to figure out what is attractive. You analyze the competition and you want to find out what's attractive about Apple. Why is Apple very interesting for customers? Maybe it's the OS and there's really nothing you can do to compete with that operating system. Um, maybe people buy these ones because they're cheap. Okay, so if you want to enter the market based on being the cheapest price uh, you might compete against them. Maybe this one has, um, the Sony has the best battery recharger or the best camera. So if you want to compete with that one, you would want to have a good camera or good, you know, find a camera that can compete with them. So you look at all the different competition and you try to figure out which one is the one that I want, I think I can take market share from? So that's one of your possible goals. Not just profit, right? We think about, okay, all businesses have profit as a goal, but uh, we can break that down into increased sales, right? So even if your profit is not as high as it was, we want to get market share. We want to have people know our brand. So we have different goals. We could have um, profit, of course, total sales, increase market share and increase brand awareness. So those are four different goals, right? So profit is money after cost. Sales is the number of people who are using our product. So that should be rising, you hope. Uh, market share means how much we're selling compared to the other customers. And brand awareness is how many customers recognize our logo or know who we are. So uh, there's different ways that you can attack a market but uh, usually you look at the market share so you can think about your competition. So market share of the business is the percentage of the entire market that one individual business has. And then they show an example on page 39. I'm at the top of page 39. <clears throat> and they're basically showing what I was talking about before. They start with all the consumers in the market, then they think about who is potentially interested in the product, and then they try to identify a target market. And once they do that, they try to enter the market. This is called market penetration, and then have a target for what the market share that company will be out of all the other companies. So market sizes, so the total market, the potential market, the target market, and then how much is the market share of the company. So you can break it down in steps. If the business in the market wanted to work towards enlarging the whole market, they would be aiming to increase the overall number of consumers purchasing the product or service. Each business would also be aiming to ensure that they kept or increased their proportion of the market share at the same time. So this is a market where there's three companies. Company, uh, one company has a huge market share, 55, and there's two other competitors in that market. So um, <clears throat> what is that? Uh, So what is this about? It says enlarging the market. There's another phrase. If the goal was enlarging the whole market. So 
Um, let's think about that um, in terms of the pizza business. So pizza. About, I don't know, I would say 10, maybe 10 years ago now, there were, there were a few local pizza companies. I think it was like El Fresco, Pizza Roma. There weren't many pizza companies in Ho Chi Minh City. It wasn't, maybe it's even longer. I think it's about 10 years. It wasn't very popular at all. Very few people were interested or even tasted pizza before. Um, a lot of people thought that if you just put ketchup and cheese on bread, it was pizza, which is disgusting. Um, pizza sauce and ketchup are very different. Um, so when the first companies started to enter the market, so I think there was a, a Pizza Hut, whatever that was called, um, I can't remember now, there's one on the uh, Nguyen Van Choi Street, Pizza Inn. Pizza Inn started, but they weren't really that good. Some people maybe had tried pizza before, so they were kind of interested, but it wasn't a great company. When uh, the first company that came in after that from overseas was Pizza Hut, actually. Pizza Hut came, they only opened up about four or five shops. Um, eventually, some people started to be interested in it. Pizza Hut has a pretty good quality uh, pizza. Still probably felt expensive to people at the time. After Pizza Hut, Domino's came into the market, into our market. And so if you were thinking like this, it, there's two ways to, to, there's two situations that a, a company could enter a market in. So the first case would be like this. Most people have a mobile phone already, right? So I'm not going to be able to find new customers to sell a new kind of mobile phone. I would have to take some customer from a different company. So uh, when uh, Domino's came, Pizza Hut was still very small, right? There were 10 million people in our city and probably only 5% maybe had even eaten pizza before. So this market was very small. So when Domino's came into the market, they weren't really in competition for market share from uh, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut was actually happy that Domino's came into the market because it introduced more people to pizza, it made pizza more visible, and the uh, number of potential customers grew. So that's what's called enlarging the market. So sometimes your goal, if you have a product or service that's very different, uh, or, or new uh, for a market, um, your goal is not necessarily to go in there and try to take the competition, but actually it works together with the other competition to convince everyone that this is a product they should have. So up until the point where everyone has tried pizza, all the people who have tried it have decided, okay, I like it or I don't like it, um, and then the market is uh, what we call mature. It means that everyone who's ever tried it already knows if they like it or not. Up until that point, the companies almost, you know, feel good about each other's competition because they're all raising the, uh, the product's uh, potential market. So up until the potential market is reached, they don't really compete with each other. Once the market is uh, finished and everybody knows the product, then they try to take market share from each other. So when you enter the market for your product, uh, let's say it might be bubble tea four or five years ago, maybe there were still some people who still wanted to try new kinds of bubble tea. But now everyone knows bubble tea, everyone consumes it, and your goal now is to find competition in that market and try to take down one of the current bubble tea uh, providers and to find a niche, a place, a niche, a place in the market that you can find that other people have not reached yet. It's a niche market. So 
your goal can be if you were doing something that was brand new your goal would could be to uh, introduce customers to this market or your goal can be to take market share from another company so those are your, those are goals your marketing goals um, again in this example in the book it says industry leader the industry leader in this case I think uh, it says business A has 55% of the market um, so I'm gonna uh, play one more video I'm not gonna get into target market segmentation until next week I just want to introduce the idea of marketing in general right now I have one more video that I'm gonna show another short one Objectives means marketing goals. Goals. How do we figure out our goals for our marketing plan? Let's spend a few minutes exploring the concept of. Hi there. Let's spend a few minutes exploring the concept of marketing objectives. And start with an example. Aldi, the fast-growing discount supermarket chain. Obviously, we know in the UK that Tesco is still the market leader, but what do you reckon the market share in the UK of Aldi is of the grocery market? Well, the data I picked up was from September 2019, and they had a 8.1% market share. That's their share of the total value of sales of grocery sales in the UK. And it's one example of a marketing objective, market share. Let's do one more example, back to the humble potato crisp. We know that Walkers is the market leader in terms of the value of crisps sold, but what about the volume of crisps sold in the UK? Well, some data from a year or two ago suggests that Walkers is by far the market leader in terms of sales volume. In 2017, 77 million kilograms of Walkers crisps crisp sold, compared with uh, McCoy's kettle tools, they're six, seven, eight times as large as other leading crisp brands. So what we've done there, I'll give you two examples of common marketing objectives. Data that helps us work out whether a business has achieved a specific goal, a specific marketing target in relation to its marketing activities, its marketing strategy. Now you may want to pause the video as we're going along to add your notes. Here on the screen are the five main types of marketing objectives. Sales volume, which is uh, going back to our crisps example. Marketing objectives, sales volume, total sales, uh, sales value, this is profit, this is how much money we're bringing in, uh, the percentage of growth in the sales, so is the sales going up or down, um, market share compared to our competitors, and this one, brand awareness. How many people know about our company? So, and brand loyalty too. Brand loyalty is separate. These are two separate things. Brand loyalty means how many customers return, how many customers keep buying, uh, re returning to your product or service. And brand awareness is how many people know of your uh, brand. Have they heard of you? The, the, the volume, the quantity sold. You might also have an objective in relation to the value of the volume sold, the sales value or revenues. And two very common sales uh, and market share percentages. Sales growth, the growth of the business, that's not the growth of the market, it's the growth of the business itself in terms of the value of the sales. And the growth or the percentage of the market owned by the business, the market share. But there are other marketing objectives out there. I've put one, one down at the bottom of the list there. Brand loyalty, brand awareness is another interesting and measurable objective for marketing. Well, when we're looking at marketing objectives um, in a separate video, we'll look at the influences on how you set these objectives. Uh, it's clear that there are some significant benefits from setting um, realistic and relevant marketing objectives. Not the least being as we know with other functional areas, that by having a set of sensible, uh, realistic, 
relevant marketing objectives, it means that your marketing strategy, your marketing activities should be aligned with the overall objectives of the business, the corporate objectives. And as we'll see, uh, as we we'll assumed just before that, marketing objectives are often very similar to, if not the same as, some of the corporate objectives, particularly in things in relation to things like market share. And of course, therefore, uh, these objectives should help you focus. Um, the marketing budget isn't unlimited in most businesses, therefore, it's about identifying what are the priorities for the marketing mix and to allocate resources. Okay, that's the point I was making earlier, is that you don't have an unlimited budget. These resources are financial resources. That's your budget for marketing. So if you don't have your target set well, or you don't know your target market well enough to know how to reach them, then you waste resources. You waste the advertising budget that you have. It's very limited, right? So even uh, you know anything that's not a mass market, is going to waste money unless they do good research on how they're going to meet their customers. To ensure that the marketing objectives are achieved. And of course, as we look at objectives, it gives us a way of measuring performance. Now, there are some downsides, as there are with all uh, business objectives, functional objectives, in this case, marketing. I think one of the issues with marketing is that. Um, is there's relatively few businesses that aren't operating in fast-changing, dynamic markets. So there's, an always, there's always a, a, a risk that something happens in the external environment, perhaps a new competitor, perhaps some changes in legislation, which makes marketing objectives not obsolete, but may make them harder to achieve. There's also obviously a potential conflict between the different marketing objectives you can set. For example, you may have an objective to uh, increase market share, and you decide to do that by cutting and selling prices, but that may have implications for the brand, brand awareness, brand loyalty. It may also have implications for revenues, uh, depending on the price elasticity of demand. And I think it's also, this is particularly the case with marketing objectives, it's also very easy to be quite ambitious with your marketing objectives. You know, I'll be there 8.1%, could it achieve? Well, yeah, possibly. It's going to be hard work, but there's no reason why they shan't. They shouldn't be able to get to 10% in the UK market. But if they came out with a marketing objective of being a 15 to 20% market share, you might argue that that really is pushing it too far because there are too many variables and there, too many competitors, too many things that can happen that make that marketing objective difficult to achieve. There we go, that's just a, a quick introduction to an overview of the main types of marketing objectives. Okay, I know it's been a stressful week for all of us, uh, trying to figure out how to deal with this technological communication. Um, I uh, hope that you uh, are successful in your task that we have due next week. So we have two things, we have, well, three things. We have a homework assignment. I gave you some questions. I'm probably going to give you some extra questions after this uh, lesson as well. Just basics on uh, definitions of target market and things like that, mass market, niche market. Um, so uh, I will still be online this weekend to answer questions about your task. Probably the best way to ask questions is to use the, um, the classroom and you can ask questions in, you don't have to go back to the task to ask the questions. You can ask questions on the latest posting of the classroom and that way I'll see it quicker. Um, next week I'll have a box, uh, starting Monday I'll have a box here in the entrance way so the security guards you can turn in your paper just make sure you put on it a e b and e and you can put my name too if you want 
A, E, B, and E, and I'm going to collect all the papers into one kind of mailbox um, for, for each person. Uh, then, we're going to have our choices of our topics for our small business. So, I'll, as soon as you, I'll, I'll work on that this weekend too, and those people who already sent their ideas in, I'll try to get back to you as fast as possible, and then on Monday, uh, I'll give you some instructions about starting your market research. Uh, most of your market research is going to be based on the market environment of your business. So it's the P-E-S-T, political, economic, social, and technological factors. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks for your attention.